Nashville, Tennessee, it's Dove Channel's Stand Up for Families Comedy Hour with Shonda Pierce, featuring Brad Stein, Anthony Griffith, Lisa Mills, Shanita Morris, Taylor Mason. Now, here's your host, the Queen of Clean herself, Shonda Pierce. you're here this is going to be such a lineup i know a lot of these comedians some of them are, some of them are funny the others need jesus but that's a whole nother story this is just really going to be a lot of fun and for all of you that are watching at home thank you for joining us don't choke on your popcorn gather your kids in this is safe hug on to your wife and we're going to have a blast i want to tell you something i have been doing this for 20 something years and i know that television adds a few pounds so it's the first time in a while i have squeezed into some spanks <laughs> Now, if you don't know what spanks are, that means your wife is skinny and we don't like her all that much. <laughs> but I will tell you, it's been a while. I put them away. I got tired of the peer pressure of trying to look skinny and, you know, hang in there with all those little sad little skinny girls. And, and I, I blew it. Tonight I got nervous and I squeezed into them. And so about halfway through the show, I'll be on oxygen. <laughs> So don't let that tank hit you on the way out. But I, I'm just telling you, I was in the bathroom just trying, well, this is kind of personal, but I was just a tugging and a pulling. I don't know if you've ever tried to put on a pair of spanks in a hurry. And, uh, and my thumb went through, and all of a sudden, the fat just pooched out. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I thought I had a tumor. <laughs> we were going to have to hold the show and everything. I'm like, I need a, there's a tumor growing here. <laughs> And so I, you know, I tried to tuck the fat in, I couldn't, so then I just got the tank top spank and put it over the shortsy spank. Now, if you have the shortsy spanks, you girls know what I'm talking about, because suddenly you get two tumors just above your knee. <laughs> your knees begin to swell. I couldn't get my shoes on, because I'm cutting the circulation off, and I can't get the tumor. So I got the tank top spanks over the shortsy spanks. I, I have double reinforcement. <laughs> and then you have a hot flash. <laughs> One rolls up and one rolls down. They will lift and separate, if you don't know what I mean. And your beer gut just flops out. It is the most embarrassing thing, and I wouldn't be embarrassed about it if I didn't come out here and tell you about it. I'm nuts. So all that... That's not funny. All that to say, I, you know, I'm trying to get used to this whole, you know, Polish sausage thing again. And I had given it up in Afghanistan. Now, that's a strange place to give up Spanx. But I was in Afghanistan, uh, like you do, with the cowboy cheerleaders. Dallas cowboy cheerleaders? Yeah, so we had a lot in common. And so... <laughs> because they wear Spanx, too. That's all they wear. I tried to wear my Spanx under my clothes. They just let the spandex fly, you know? And everything was supported very well. Um, very well. I, want, I just want to tell you, those little... I don't know how the Cowboys are doing, you know, playing football and all that, but they need to start winning so they can feed the cheerleaders. <laughs> That's some sad, skinny girls. Like, and, and so we're there to entertain the troops to lift up, you know, their morale and uh and so that was their idea and then the girl who was like the MC of the show that I was in with, with this group of people this fine group of people she was a girl that had been on the cover of Playboy and in the swimsuit edition of Sports Illustrated so we got to room together because we had so much to discuss <laughs> it included a lot of scripture and so <laughs> And I told her where she could hide her pamphlets, too. So, and, and it, you know, and this is the thing. Let's just say there were parts of her that walked into the room before other parts of her. And she was proud of those parts. And, and I'm pretty sure they were store-bought, I'm just saying. I don't think the Lord gave her those. I think somebody else did. And... Or maybe some of it might have been her, because I saw a billboard not long ago where you could have some of this sucked out and put somewhere else. You can even have some of this sucked out and put, like, under your eyes if you got bags under your... This is true. You couldn't really... Your bottom end could be blinking right now. <laughs> I just made that whole thing up. That is funny. 
edit that out of this family-friendly show. Shonda said my bottom end can blink. I cannot believe it, but oh gosh, now my face is red. My face is never red. Yeah, it is. I just had another hot flash. Look, if I melt away and there's a little puddle of water right here, it's, it's sweat, I think. I'm just saying, the spanks are awful tight. <laughs> I knew they shouldn't let me have all that coffee. But all that to say, it is going to be a really fun night. I am so excited to share some of these folks with you because these are great, incredibly funny human beings and all family-friendly, hilarious, clean comics, as far as we know. <laughs> Get the remote ready. I am so excited about this next guy. I think one of these days we probably are going to have to go on tour together because my women will eat him alive. And his audience, which is primary men, primarily men, I would like to have a chat with. All that to say, he is absolutely fun, hilarious, but a little scary. NBC Nightly News has him often. He's been on Showtime, CNN, Glenn Beck, MTV, and Comedy Central. He's been published in Reader's Digest, all the way to Focus on the Family. His film credits include an HBO show called Poodle Springs, Welcome to Paradise, Sarah's Choice, and lately, Christmas with a capital C, and covering your tracks. He is the very funny, very intense, and hilarious friend, Brad Stein! Keep it going for her, for Shonda! Shonda Pierce! She's funny, she's talented, she's depressed constantly. I am excited to be here. This is where I wanted to be. Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday night in a warehouse. Woo! I think it's official, my career has peaked. I love coming to Tennessee, I'm gonna tell you why. I even moved here and I'm gonna tell you why. Because when I come to Tennessee, this is the way I see America. I look at you people and this reminds me of who we were. Blue car, you pull, pull your stuff. That wasn't the funny part yet, ma'am, it's all right. I'll get to it, but thank you so much. When you don't know when to laugh, follow this lady right over here. She's just gonna jump in for no reason whatsoever. Just be my guest, ma'am, that's right. She's the 1%, stealing everybody else's laughs. That's what's happening. Share the laughs, distribute them, ma'am, with everyone. I, she's scared to death her husband's life. Look straight ahead, he won't talk to me. What's he doing to your wife? Let him have her! This is crazy for Christian television. No, I love Tennessee because you remind me of who we were, blue collar. Pull yourself up by your own bootstrap. Let me tell you why I love coming to Tennessee. Because you hunt, you fish, and you don't apologize for it. And that's why I love coming here. That's America. That's what I'm, I'm sick up to here with this politically correct, don't shoot the animals, they might get their feelings hurt. This is Tennessee, you don't even pretend to be animal rights activists. You people are see the bunny, shoot it, eat it, make a hat. <laughs> Out of the rats, a cute bunny. Yeah, that sure was a cute <laughs> That a snake? Nope, that's a boot right there. Put that on. <laughs> that's America. Shoot it, eat it, you got a head left over. Hang it on your wall. That's who we were. That's what made us great. Why? Because we had to take care of ourselves. Had to take care of each other. No whining. That was the key. That's what has happened to America, this political correctness that has made whining the national pastime. You know what I'm saying, don't you, sir? No, you don't. You're just sitting there staring at me. He's like scared to... Yes, whatever you say, master. Yes. I will do anything. No, we've got that type of whining. I was just in California. California. The most wussified state in the United stinking states of America. Oh my gosh, I'm intimidated. I'm gonna get beat up by a Christian lady over there. She'll do it with love though, there you go. Now I'll heal him, lay his hands on him. No, it's okay. I was there and all I got was the wine. Weather whiners. I was there in January and they're like, oh, it's so cold, it's so cold. 50. This is what I'm talking about. Let me tell you what cold is. I was in Winnipeg, Canada once in January. You ready? 70 below! 
17. And people live there on purpose. I could understand if it was a place of exile. A place you've been sent because you were bad in hell. But these people want to be there with their kids. There's like, oh, I should have been here last year. It was really cold. You see what I'm saying? Like, give them credit. They've accepted it. They don't whine. They've accepted it. Not me. I got in, got my money, got out. I don't want to live in a place where 70 below zero is considered nippy. Thank you. Don't want to live in a place where you go out to get the mail and then you die. Don't want to live in a place where everybody smokes because nobody wants to prolong their life expectancy. There's like three-year-olds on tricycles. <laughs> you sick yet? No! Don't even have a tumor yet. People getting locked out of the house. Honey! That's cold. But here's the problem. Wine, wine, take them out of the wine, put them in the heat. What do they do? Wine! Because it's not about the cold or the heat. It's about the character or lack thereof. I was in Vegas. Y'all been to Vegas, right? It's a Christian audience. We've never actually heard of Las Vegas. <laughs> Is that like in the Babylonian Empire? Or what you... <laughs> I was there. First time I ever went to Vegas, month of July. Yeah, I'll see all these people moaning. They just lied a second ago. But I was there in July. And by the way, if you're thinking about taking a little family getaway to Vegas in July, do this. <laughs> it was 120. And you know what? It should be. It's the desert. That's where 120 hangs out. See, the problem is not, is it hot in the desert? The problem is, why would you start a town there? What are your options? Well, we don't have enough fuels to make it to the surface of the sun. Let's all live here. Okay, Brigham, let's go to Vegas. I'm putting sunscreen on, it's crawling off. You're on your own. They don't walk their dogs during the day. I thought, because they might caca. No, because they might burst into flame. Those hairy poodles, come on, Vivi. Vegas, Mexican word, it means move. Even the cactus are saying, stop. See, this is the key. God gives you clues as to a good place to live. And I'm thinking, if your shrubbery has hypodermic needles attached to it, not a good place to live. Keep it going. Why? Because God is what drove this nation years ago. We believed in God. We knew we had to answer to God. We knew that we had to be that type of folk. You know what I'm talking about. You're church people, right? You know what I'm saying? Look at him. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> we didn't know there'd be questions at the comedy. We were... I'm very confused. I need my concordance. <laughs> Thank It's, uh, see, the one time I need you to laugh, you're nowhere to be found. <laughs> Keep up, man! What the heck? <laughs> These people are like, this is odd. I've never seen such a thing. Not at a Christian event. No, this is the key. We need to remember and restore God. Why? Because we know that that's what gave us the foundation for this great nation. So you have to go study and see what he's all about. I did, and I'm going to have to give you some information. You may not like it. I don't care. God is a guy. A couple of the ladies are laughing all the time. All the men are like, may, may I laugh too, sweetheart? Can I laugh? May I laugh at the God guy thing? Because I'm one of those things. Girls giving them the... Except for the guys married over 30 years. They got a callus. They don't feel that in... What do I'm talking about? You must see what God has for us. You got to study. You got to go to his book. He wrote a book, bestseller. See what he has to say. That's what I'm getting at. So what do I mean God's a guy? Let's figure it out. Number one, he always calls himself father. And up until a couple of years ago, that was normally considered a dude. <laughs> Didn't know that was going to get complicated. How much we know God's a guy? Because everything he invented, he said 
was good. <laughs> and this is before duct tape, I might add. Matter of fact, if God had used duct tape, he would have used a real duck. He's God! How else do we know God's a guy? Because he worked hard for six days and then took a nap. <laughs> On Sunday, so he could watch the game. <laughs> and how do I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God Almighty is a guy? Because he invented women. <laughs> and they were naked. <laughs> Sorry, only a guy would have come up with that. Got the Southern Baptist. I don't believe he said naked at a Christian concert. I'm trying to have a pure thought life and now I've got naked people stuck in my head. All I can picture is naked people dancing through tulips and ivy. Why would he say naked at the devil world combination television show and God said it was good. That's right, look at him now. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. And I got good news for you, son. It's still good. It's still good. Uh, how old are you, boy? He's 11. See, I said they were naked. All the men are going, very interesting, theological. 11's got a smile going to the back of his head. <laughs> Suddenly, he's a theologian. <laughs> Tell me more of this Genesis. <laughs> and the naked women they're in. It's all right, that's how we were designed by God. It's okay, because in the sacred covenant of marriage, that's exactly how it was supposed to be. It's okay, son, that's how you were designed. God even said that. He said he made man from the dust of the earth. The dust of the earth. That's why men like getting dirty. It's like a family reunion. <laughs> and good. But then he said this, he said he breathed life into his nostrils and he became a living soul, half man, spiritual and biological. That's what made us unique. And then God sent something unique. Right before that, he said, it's good I made sun, stars, good I made land, but it is not good that man should be alone. And we weren't. We had God. He said, not enough. I'm going to make something exactly like you, but completely different. <laughs> something you will want, desire, and not be able to live without, and it's going to drive you out of your mind. <laughs> and so he put him to sleep, and he pulled from his rib, and he crafted her. A woman, a woman, a womb man. From man's womb she came. That's right, men were the first ones to give birth. Then we stepped back, observed our handiwork, and said, okay, ladies, you can take it from here. <laughs> My work is done. Because that's how it was. Men and women learning to get along, learning to do the best they could in their environment. You know what I'm saying, don't you, sir? What's your name? Phil. Okay. He's the happiest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> My name is Phil, and I hate the front row. What? Look at what he just said. She brought me! <laughs> it was the woman that you gave me, Lord! Thank you, Judas. Here's your silver. Run off. You've done well. <laughs> Go forth. But that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. When they came together, it worked. Why? Because women have powers. Magical powers. And they use them. They use them whenever they need to show you who's boss. <laughs> Guess when you got your own show, you can just yell out anytime you want to, huh? <laughs> Guess when it's the Shonda Pierce Garvey show, just screw up my act. Thanks, Shonda. <laughs> Crying out loud, at least you're getting paid. <laughs> Amen. Amen it is. <laughs> But that's what I'm, all I'm trying to get at, is that's how it began. With them coming together and the women showing their power, their magic. For example, women can make things appear from nowhere that weren't there just moments before, no matter how long we looked. <laughs> Guys know what I'm talking about. Hey, where's the mayonnaise? In the refrigerator? No, it's not. I've been looking for 15 minutes. There's no mayonnaise in the refrigerator. I've been looking all over the place. There's nothing there. All I said was, give me one jar of mayonnaise, but it's not there. Second shelf behind the pickles. No, because... <gasps> <laughs> How did 
did you do that? <laughs> they use these powers whenever they can, whenever they have it. They can take your favorite shirt, hang it up, but you can't see it until they let you. <laughs> Guys know what I mean. There's no shirts. Where's my shirt? It's hanging up. No, it's not. I've been through every shirt. It's not hanging up. Then they just toy with you. Let me see if I can find it. There's mayonnaise in the pocket. How did you do that? <laughs> He's got powers that I never suspected. Powers that they can utilize anytime, anywhere. Why? Because they're women made at a special time. In the beginning with man, right? There they were, Adam and Eve. And God said, Adam! Because God sounds like me. <laughs> well, he could. He's God. He can do anything. <laughs> I could be God and make myself not remember. <laughs> Two people have philosophy students are sucking up. He's right. He could be God. I'm not taking any chances. You're funny, Lord! Well, it's going to be great if you go to heaven and it's me. I don't believe it! It was the comedian. So, so here's what happens. There they sit, Adam and Eve, and God says, Adam, let Eve not pick from the tree of good and evil. But what God was implying was, don't let her go shopping. Because God knew once they learned how to shop, nobody could stop. I'm one of the greatest shoppers that have ever lived on the face of the earth. You are geniuses. That's why men hate to shop with women. You're too advanced. We can't begin to grasp your technique. Where are you going? Shopping? What for? Nothing. Good luck. Men have never gone fishing for nothing before. Catch anything? No. I don't even bring a pole anymore. Shopping for nothing! Men can't do that. If a man went shopping for a shirt, he'd end up with a shirt. Oh, what a bunch of morons we turned out to be. <laughs> Women get a shirt, they need pants. Pants mean socks, socks mean shoes. Shoes means diamonds, somehow. Haven't figured that one out. But that's the power that they have. They know how to, how, how to use their wiles and their intelligence and their beauty to get what they need. They know how to shop. They know how to find the proper clothing because they're similar to men. You got a man, you got a woman, man. You got a male, you got a fee, male. So apparently we're all man, male, but women achieve the fee and the woe. Why? Why is your name two letters better than ours? <laughs> apparently you've achieved a higher rank of some kind. A superiority for one other thing, women are better looking than men. More attractive, more aesthetically pleasing the eye. That's why they gave you the better looking name so we could tell you apart. Look at him, you go, man. Look at her, you go, whoa. Man. <laughs> Plus, women have power because women have purses. <laughs> women can survive in the desert for years with the items in their purse alone. <laughs> Amelia Earhart is alive somewhere <laughs> eating lipstick. <laughs> but women have purses. Purses have purse strings. Purse strings means money. Money is power. Women have purses. They have power. Does that mean they're better than men? No. It means you made yourself more valuable than men. We're committed to the relationship. Men aren't that good at that. We're not good. We have to try, not women. They see the man they want, they grab him. Not the, by the lapel, by the soul. Till you got to have him. Till you can't live without him. By the way, women don't just give themselves away. They make you earn them. And that's why you got a male and a female. Because you're going to have that male for nothing. But with this male, there's a fee involved. God bless you guys for coming out and supporting comedy. I'll see you. Thank you. is a wonderfully hilarious man. He's been in 25 national comedy specials from HBO all the way to Comedy Central. He's traveled with the Apostle of Comedy Tour. He is a wonderful Christian man and I love him very much. Please make welcome Anthony Griffith. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad to be in Nashville. Uh, before I start, if I stutter uh, tonight or if my voice quivers, it's not because I'm nervous. If I was nervous, I was simply wee-wee on myself. <laughs> so just to recap, if I'm wet tonight, I'm nervous. <laughs> if my voice does what it do, it's because I have some physical challenges. I have a lot of physical challenges. Um, 
I found out I suffer from paranoia. I always think people are watching me. <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with MS. And actually, my wife knew something was, was going on because we were dancing one night. And she whispered, are, are you OK? Because you're dancing funny. And I was like, funny? What way? She said, well, you're dancing like a white guy. <laughs> and, uh, and I got so scared <laughs> that I rushed to the emergency room. And I told the doctor, my wife said, I'm dancing like, uh, like you. And he put in a CD, and he said, do the hokey pokey. And I did it, but I liked it. <laughs> and he said, yeah, something's going on, because no healthy brother likes doing the hokey pokey. <laughs> so I had to take x-rays, and the doctor said, well, I'm going to give you x-rays. It's OK. It's very little radiation. It's not harmful at all. And then they gave me a sheet of lead to put over my body. <laughs> And then they ran out the room. <laughs> so uh, this year, I celebrate my 30th year being married. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And I can truly say, after 30 years and five stitches and one restraining order, uh, I've learned to say I'm sorry. I wake up saying, I'm sorry. As soon as I get up, good morning, honey. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? I don't know yet. I'm just trying to earn some extra credit. I almost didn't marry my wife because she had the habit of walking into things where we were dating because she's nearsighted, which I didn't know because she never wore her glasses around me. And I saw my wife walk into a brick wall once, <laughs> hard. I thought her car had backfired. <laughs> That's how hard she walked into that wall. And she still refused to tell me she had an eye problem, even when she regained consciousness. <laughs> i like, baby, you OK? Yeah, why you say that? Because you just walked into that building. Well, I didn't see it. <laughs> you didn't see the building? Exactly what part of the building do you see? I didn't see the building. Are you calling me a liar? <laughs> no, I'm not calling you a liar. If you didn't see the building, you didn't see the building. In fact, now that I take a good look at the building, I can see how you missed it. In fact, when I woke up and saw just how foggy it was, the first thing I said to myself was, man, I hope I don't walk into a building. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and we went on the cruise ship uh, for our anniversary this year. And I love cruise ships because you can eat whatever you want, as much as you want. And I'm a firm believer that uh, a family that cruises together will get fat together. <laughs> The only thing I don't like about cruise ships is that the bathrooms are twice as powerful as any flushing system <laughs> on land. And there's no sign. There's no sign that says, caution, careful when you flush. And I made the mistake of flushing while I was still sitting. <laughs> All the hair on my backside <laughs> left me <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Women, I know what it feels like to have a Brazilian wife. <laughs> Those towel racks, they're not for towels. They're for you to hang on for dear life <laughs> when you flush the toilet. And I know because of me, there's a school of fish swimming <laughs> with little tiny afros. <laughs> and on the ship, I met a guy that was married for 50 years. And I was so impressed. I said, man, 
how, what's the secret of your marriage? He said, he's deaf in one ear. <laughs> and I said, what, what ear? He said, whatever side my wife. <laughs> So we, we went to Hawaii for the cruise. I found out that the word appetizer in Hawaii is poo-poo. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I took my wife out to dinner, and the waiter came up to the table and said, sir, would you like to start off the evening with some hot steaming poo-poo? <laughs> well, we don't eat poo-poo where I'm from. <laughs> Especially when it's hot. <laughs> the closest we get is refried beans. <laughs> and refried beans are no joke. In fact, if I was the president, I would make a new law. You are not to eat refried beans unless you have three hours to kill. <laughs> by yourself. Because <laughs> your body cannot digest refried beans. It's like your mind and your body works together. If your mind says protein, your body go to the right. And if your mind says carbs, your body go to the left. But when your mind says refried beans, your body go, what? <laughs> refried beans. Let it go. <laughs> and it happens quick. I had refried beans once. I had two spoonfuls, and my stomach whispered immediately. <laughs> you have 15 seconds. <laughs> and I was like, what? Who's that talking? 14. Where's that voice coming from? Then it hit me. I was like, oh, 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 oh wait, 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 wait. And I got to the bathroom, and I thought it was finished. But that's when the game just begins. Because I thought I was finished, and I'm trying to walk out the bathroom, and it's like, uh, uh. And you think you're finished, and Ooh, that was close, and you walk back out, and <laughs> Refried beans will bring you closer to God. <laughs> You'll be in the bathroom just praying, please, Lord, make it stop. <laughs> I'll tithe more, just make it stop. <laughs> I don't have any more sick days, make it stop. <laughs> and then we went... Uh, Horseback riding. Horses are much bigger in person. <laughs> and because of my height, I'm 6'4", they, uh, they had to find a horse for me. They found a horse for me that was having a timeout moment. <laughs> it, was hand, it was handcuffed to the wall. <laughs> and I don't know what the horse did, but I knew it was something because his mouth was muzzled like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> And he had a tattoo on, a, on his arm, born to bite. And the horse name was El Diablo. <laughs> now, I don't speak a lot of Spanish. I know like, hola is hello, and gracias is thank you, and por favor, no me disparez is please don't shoot. <laughs> and El Diablo is the devil. And I was like, honey, I'm not really feeling this horse. Oh, man, up. <laughs> Don't let the horse know you're afraid. Horses can sense fear. Or in my case, they saw my fear trickling down my leg. <laughs> Thank you, Benny Gregory. Up next is a hilarious girl that I have traveled with and I love her very much. She's just a sweet gal and what I love her is when we're in the same room, we need interpretation. 
because we are both from the deep south. You will love her. She's appeared on Lifetime, Army Wives, Now Network, Impact Network, promoting her latest book tonight. Are you ready for the title? Lord, did I really shave my legs for this? <laughs> I love it. Look, every woman goes, that's the truth. Put your hands together and make welcome from Atlanta, Georgia, Lisa Mills. Awesome. What's going on? You guys look great. Well, some of y'all do. <laughs> oh, I am from Atlanta, Georgia. That is completely true. All my family is from the deep south. Generation after generation, we're all from Georgia. So you know what that means. I am one quarter American Indian and three quarters trailer park. I'm from the double wide tribe. Anyone else? <laughs> Listen, don't let the bricks fool you. You can be trailer and live in a house. Listen, if you've ever hung a curtain in the hall to keep the heat up front, on. you're one of my people. <laughs> Chances are we're probably even cousins in here. <laughs> I love it. I did grow up in that little trailer down in middle Georgia. My mama didn't have a lot to give us, but she gave us what she had, which was wisdom uh, and things like that. She used to tell me all the time, Lisa, when God closes a door, it's usually because you missed a few payments. But she did give us a ton of love, and I, I just thank the world over. She's my hero. She gave us so much love, actually. I didn't even know we were poor. We had so much love in the house. I didn't know we were poor. Do you know how you find out you're poor when you don't know you're poor? You have somebody spend the night who ain't poor. That'll do it. I had my little friend spend the night. Listen, we were clearing the, the dishes away after dinner, and she said, Lisa, where's your dishwasher? I said, she went to go lay down. And why are you so nosy? <laughs> I should have known she was going to be a problem, though. She was spending the night, so I had to go get towels so that she would have a shower later. And she wanted to get all crazy about that. I went and got her our best set, y'all, our monogram set. And she wanted to argue with me about whether or not my mama's maiden name was actually Howard Johnson. <laughs> you just can't have everybody spend the night at your house. But I love, listen, my friends, uh, my, my kids' friends, they don't actually come over a whole lot. I don't, they don't have friends over from school, so I don't really have that problem that my mom did. Um, they don't have friends over a lot from school, probably because they're homeschooled. Um, <laughs> people ask me all the time, Lisa, why did you homeschool? Is it because you want your kids to pray in school? Is it because of the violence that's in the headlines nowadays? I'm like, are you kidding? It's way more serious than that. I homeschool because I hate fundraisers. <laughs> Seriously, you send your child to school, and by August, they are little Amway people. <laughs> and they show up on my door with that big old fat packet. Look, if they never get playground equipment, it's fine with me. <laughs> I didn't have none. <laughs> and my kids have the same equipment I had, a broken stick and a propane tank. <laughs> if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for my kids. <laughs> Keep them humble, I say. I love them. I do have two sons, though. Uh, one's 15 and one's unemployed. Um, I heard that unemployed is a new creative. Of course, my son told me that. Uh, he went away to ministry school, actually. He went away to Atlanta, Georgia, two years of ministry school there, finished that program. Now he's back home living on my couch because apparently they told him there that Jesus paid it all. Um <laughs> I told him I didn't know if that was Old Testament or New Testament, but, but in this house, we render unto mama what is mama's. <laughs> and in this season of your life, I ain't comfortable taking a check. Um, but I love him. I love him. Young people are funny, aren't they? They're just young people, adults. They're just a little bit weird at that age. You know, and I found that out. My husband and I were actually youth leaders for about three years before I figured out I don't really like other people's kids. Um... <laughs> So we did that season. We like to call that our military service. Uh, we did that season for about three years, and we went through a time period where everybody was getting engaged. Like these high school students were getting engaged, wanting to get married. And we were telling them, listen, your heart is not the most important thing that needs protected right now. That's your credit score. <laughs> but you can't tell them nothing. They're going to do what they want to do. Um, 
So we would bring them in, do a little counseling with them, and we would tell them, listen, you don't know what you're doing. And they would tell us, Miss Lisa, I don't know what I'd do without him. You can't think of nothing. I don't think you're applying yourself. I used to love this one. Uh, Miss Lisa, listen, we were made for each other. God made us for each other. We think the same thoughts. He'll even finish my sentence for me. I'm like, baby, that is a controlling spirit. You better bind that thing right now. (laughs) But I love this one, and they're always going to end with it every single time. Miss Lisa, bottom line, he takes my breath away. Baby, that is asthma. (laughs) An inhaler will fix that. (laughs) Baby, that ain't love. That's mucus. (laughs) Wow. But I remember being young like that. I do. I remember. It's been a while, but I remember. My husband and I have been married 20 years. And so I remember when it was first dating and all that and getting engaged. Listen, at that age, you don't even know if morning breath is a deal breaker. You know what I mean? I mean, I slept with a pack of Trident under my pillow for the first six months I was married. I don't know why I say I slept. I didn't sleep. I slept the next day on my lunch hour because I didn't want him to know I snow her. I just lay there all posed up. Trying to make sure my breathing was soft like Jesus did it like that every night on purpose. (laughs) And inevitably, I'd fall asleep and I'd start snoring and I'd suck that gum right in the back of my throat. (laughs) Then I'd jump up because I think I'm dying. (laughs) Then he jumps up and I have to convince him we're being robbed. And uh, (laughs) he said that made sense. He heard a chainsaw. Um, I'm just saying you young people can't think that fast. That's an acquired marriage skill. (laughs) Wow. I did actually go to the doctor about this snoring thing. It is getting worse. I told my doctor, I said, listen, I'm going to be eating a pillow sometime soon because my husband can't take it no more. And uh, we got to do something about this. And he said, Lisa, I'm going to tell you what it is. The reason your snoring's gotten worse since you've been married is because of the weight gain, which don't make no sense. My nose is the same size today as it was the day I got married. Matter of fact, it's the only part of me still fits in that wedding dress. Y'all been great. I'm Lisa Mills. That's my time. Our next performer is a wonderful young woman, and I'm so excited to get to share her with you because we've been friends for quite some time. She's been on HBO's Death Comedy Jam, Tyler Perry's I Know I've Been Changed, BET's Comic View, nominated for the Best Female Stand-Up on the Soul Train Comedy Awards, open for Bernie Mac and Kirk Franklin. She is my friend, and she is here tonight. Please make welcome, Chanita Morris! How are you guys? Praise God. Give it up for Shonda. Now bring my purse on stage. I don't know none of (laughs) y'all. Just being careful. Ain't taking nothing for granted. Amen? Y'all might be saved, but some of y'all might not be delivered. (laughs) Thieves in the temple, right? And truth be told, you know, I'm still trying to get my deliverance, too, because, uh, you know, if somebody steal my purse, I will beat you down. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Got Shonda and Brad up here going at it about, you know, the sexes and everything. And, you know, I, I have to agree with Shonda being a woman, but I praise God. Well, the, the women make some noise. Make some noise. <laughs> Isn't it a blessing to be a woman? Isn't it a blessing? I just love the position that God has given us. You know, married women, let me tell you something. You have a blessed position in in your home. You just got to learn to be quiet. (laughs) 
And the men said, amen. amen. <laughs> it's like I was waiting on somebody to say something like that. She talks too much. But no, to me, you know, I, I, I just love being a woman because as a married woman, what you guys don't realize is no matter, you know, if you just be the woman and let him make the decisions and, you know, just, just keep it quiet and, 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 and be obedient, you know, submissive, submissive. Just think about it. If you just be the wife, let him be the husband. With the position God has given us, no matter what goes wrong in the home, it's his fault. I think that's a blessed place to be. Amen? Yeah, that, that's good. I can do that, you know? And, and see, the thing is, though, I'm waiting for that position because I'm a single woman, so everything is my fault. You know, so I'm, I've been single for a long, long time. You know, you know you've been single too long when you walking in the men's department and Macy's and the mannequins look good. You stop in dialogue with the mannequins. You wearing that suit. <laughs> How long you been working here? What are you doing tonight? Oh, you ain't gonna say nothing back? <laughs> it's hard being single today. Where the single women at? Where y'all at? It's hard being single today, especially with technology, because men are already horrible communicators. Right, men? See what I mean? <laughs> technology makes it worse you know because I'm old school you know and back in the day men would call you to try to get to know you better now everybody just want to text that's terrible you know I've been seeing a guy now for three months don't know what he sound like We're not really seeing each other, you know. Uh, I just follow him on Twitter. <laughs> I'm waiting on him to follow me back. You know, show me the feeling is mutual. <laughs> but it is, it's hard dating now, you know. And then, and then, you know, it's really hard because men know that it's a man shortage, so it's slim pickings for women. So you, you pretty much sometimes got to take what you can get, you know. Oh, yeah, it's awful. It's awful, you know. And you can tell that they, they know it's a man shortage because they got attitudes, you know. They, they making demands and what they, you know, ugly, ugly men are making demands. <laughs> what ugly men at? Where y'all at? <laughs> Raise your hand. See, some people don't know they ugly. <laughs> if you sitting beside an ugly man, point him out. <laughs> You know, they making demands of what they want in a woman, you know. And it's not so bad, but what you can't be is ugly and obnoxious, you know. You cannot be, that does not go together. And in church, you know, it's deceiving because men look good in a suit. And women, you can't go by that. You got to see him in a t-shirt and some jeans. Because a, a suit or a uniform makes a man look great. See? That's how she met her husband. <laughs> you know, no, it does. It makes them look really good. So, you know, some men, some of y'all should wear suits no matter what. I don't care what you're doing. If you're cutting the grass, do it in a suit. You're going swimming, do it in a suit. <laughs> it's hard being single today. And I've been single for a long time. You know, I'm single because I'm divorced. And uh, I've been divorced twice. Don't judge me. <laughs> I heard that, ooh. <laughs> you know, see, you tell people you, you're divorced, you know, and then just one divorce, they, you know, they give you a reprieve. Two times, you be like, okay, she ain't no good. <laughs> and I'm not. Okay, that, that, yeah, I'm, I'm some good. I'm a good woman. But no, I've been divorced twice. And, you know, in both marriages, I really couldn't say. And, you know, I don't, I don't advocate divorce like that. I'm not saying if you're going through some stuff, just leave. It was a hard situation in both situations. I couldn't stay, you know. One was a crackhead and the other one was trying to crack my head. <laughs> That's not funny. No. Oh, oh, I mean, it ain't. Okay, well, okay. This ain't the Oprah show. <laughs> She is really mad over here. 
Did you see a ball up her fist? I will hit him. Where is he at? Put him up. <laughs> no, I'm over it. I'm over it. God got me out of it. Amen. So I've been, I've been single for a while now. You know, when you first get single as a woman of God, you know, you, you make this declaration, you're just going to let God do it from this point on. You've made your mistakes now. You know, it's in your hands, God. And as women of God, you know, a lot of times, I don't know about y'all, but we, get, we make us a list. Lord, this is what I want right here. <laughs> Hook a sister up. You give your <laughs> list to God. You know, and you think God has all power in his hands. Surely this will not take long. You know, three years go by. You'd be like, what? Four years, you'd be like, all right, Jesus. Come on now. Don't trust the sister so much. Sister growing weary. I need you to make that change. Five years go by. You'd be like, okay, this is taking longer than I thought it would. So you pull your list right back out, right? You'd be like, hold on. Some of this stuff ain't necessary. <laughs> a good job ain't necessary. <laughs> Long as he got a job, a job will do. <laughs> so you yet holding on, right? You know, six years go by, seven years. You thinking this is a year of completion. You know, that's the number of completion. Surely it will happen this year. Nothing. You pull your list right back out. See, teeth. <laughs> teeth is not necessary. He don't have to have no teeth, Jesus. We wasn't even born with teeth. Teeth. That's the world's way. That ain't even biblical. <laughs> teeth. You don't have to have no teeth, Jesus. We can eat soup every day. <laughs> oh, <we'll> compromise. Because <laughs> it gets hard. You know, you get holding on trying to do this the way the Lord, you know, intended for it to be done. And it just gets hard. And some nights, you know, you really get discouraged. You be like, Lord... I can work with one leg, Jesus, one leg. He can lean on me, Lord. He can lean on me. And I will compromise. <laughs> it gets hard, you know. And that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to start, you know, just uh, uh, lowering your standards. Because sometimes it does. Some nights you just get real discouraged. You be like, God, can you just send me somebody to help me pay these bills? Next thing you know, your sister moving in with you. <laughs> she got five kids. <laughs> You're like, Lord, why you answer that one so quick? <laughs> this is hard. It is hard being single today. It really is, you know. You got you a good man, ladies. You, how many ladies got a good man out there? Mm-hmm. They are way too happy, aren't they? <laughs> wow. Well, praise God. You got, you got you a good man, ladies. You hold on to him. Good men are hard to find. They like parking spaces. All the good ones are taken except for the handicapped. You got you a good man. You hold on to him. <laughs> And I mean, you know, you know, because I'm going to tell you, and in the body of Christ, you know, we got, to, we got to have a more excellent spirit, you know. I run into guys, nice looking guys that, you know, nice looking, nice job, everything, but the breath is toe up. <laughs> what is it about church people that don't think we need a mint? <laughs> church folks are the worst ones when it comes to breath, and bad breath is my pet peeve. I don't know about y'all, but you have been trying to witness to somebody and uh, no matter how much you witness, ain't nobody coming to Christ. Check your breath. <laughs> you cannot witness to lost souls with the demon of bad breath on your tongue. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Amen. <laughs> we represent Christ and it should be done in excellence, right? You ever been around somebody breath is so bad, their mouth is closed and you can still smell it. You'd be like, can you close your nose too? <laughs> But I can't breathe. Well, I can't breathe either. One of us gonna have to die. 
You better pray for salvation. Your end is near. We got to do better taking care of our breath. You ever, you ever been to church? You know, you, you ever had one of those weeks you couldn't wait to get to church? Because everything the enemy could throw at you, he did. You know, and you couldn't wait to get to church to get in the presence of God and his people and, you know, get your worship on. And you get to church early that Sunday. You know, get, in, get there early, get you a front row seat. The choir is singing all your favorite songs. You know every word. You know, you, you getting your praise on. But it's a sister, she come in and she hallelujah happy but her breath is toe up. And she overemphasizing them hallelujahs. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! She all in your face. You know the devil sent her. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! You be like, no, holotosis. <laughs> you about to kill me. Everybody on her pew is laid out. She think they slain in the spirit. No, it's your breath. And that's the Sunday all pastor want to say is turn to your neighbor and say. Turn to your neighbor and say, happy to have you here. <laughs> I'm Shanita Morris. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Next up tonight is an incredible incredible comedian, a great friend, and comedy comes in all shapes and sizes, so he has all shapes and sizes with him. He's a ventriloquist. He won Star Search in 1990, and he's a very, very dear friend of mine. Put your hands together and welcome Taylor Mason! Shonda Pierce never gets enough love. Give her a whole bunch of love. She put this whole thing together. Awesome. I am so thrilled to be here. What a good person of service. Incredible. That's what we're about. Service has gone downhill so quickly in our country. So I'm glad to be with you folks. I went to get a suit. I went to Armani. Yeah, Giorgio Armani. It's really cool. If you've never been there, Italian designer clothing. Very, very cool. I was in there two minutes. I wrote their slogan. Welcome to Armani, where your money becomes our money. <laughs> And they're perfectionists, the Italians. They want everything perfect. So this little man, Super Mario, is measuring my inseam on my pants, which is so upsetting because I was buying a shirt. And it turned out the guy didn't even work there. It was just some guy that had wandered in out of the mall. Oh! But the whole thing is service. And, you know, I'm just so pleased I can be with you. Get this off my chest. Because it's gone down. I went to get a smoothie. I went to get a smoothie at the smoothie store. There's one other person in the smoothie store with me. He's in front of me and the girl behind the counter. So that's the scene. Me, nice man in front of me, girl behind the counter. He gets to the counter. She says, can I help you? He didn't understand what she said, who would. And he says, excuse me. And she says, can I help you? And the poor man, very gracious Asian man, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. And then she gets mad. Can I help you? And he orders his smoothie. And she says, give me your name. I'll write it on the cup so I remember who you are. And he was a gracious Asian man. He said, my name is Chin. Spell it. T-C-H-I-E-N. Go stand over there and I'll call your name when it's ready. So mean. I know. Now it's my turn. I'm still reeling from the inseam incident. <laughs> she gives me the same spiel. Uh -huh, yeah. I said, huh. <laughs> I want to order a hooli. <laughs> but then she goes, what flavor? Ah! Now I have to think on my feet, you know, uh, chocolate, strawberry, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. It's so upsetting, you know. Give me your name, I'll write in the cup so I remember who you are. So I said, my name is Cheen. She said, spell it, T-C-H-I-E-N. She said, are you Asian? Yes, I am. I'm going to go stand with my brother right over here. Get in my car to leave. And I got cut off by a guy in a Hummer. And if you own a Hummer, good for you. If you I used to say, a Hummer, man, how ostentatious. But then my neighbor got a Hummer, and I was walking by his house, and I looked in the grill. There was a little environmentalist in there on a bicycle. And I thought, oh, I like that. Anyway, this Hummer <laughs> cuts me off, 
And then he cuts off this little old lady, the cliche, you know, she can barely see over the dashboard. He cuts her off, so I follow him into the mall. This is so upsetting. I'm so glad I can share this with you. He pulls into a handicapped parking spot. Yes, exactly. So upsetting. Then he jumps out of the Hummer. What is that? 60 feet? He parachutes out of the Hummer. Runs into the mall. I'd had it. I wrote him a note. I've never done this before. I'm so glad I can get this off my chest. I wrote him a note. Dear sir, I was livid. If you take a disabled person's parking spot, you should also take their disability. It took me almost an hour and a half to write that with the edge of my key in the hood of the Hummer. No, I, no, I didn't. I was thinking it. I was thinking it. It's all about the way we treat each other. And it's all about marketing, too. You can sell anything. I just, I'm so tired of being manipulated. You know, you can sell, you could put gravy in an aerosol can and people would buy it. Gravy in an aerosol can. You give it the right name and a nice package, there'll be people in the store. Look at this. Spravy. <laughs> baked fresh. That's another thing you see, baked fresh. What does that mean, baked fresh? I was born young. You know, what does that mean? I don't, I, I'm at the gym, I'm on the Stairmaster. There are two women in front of me. One of them on the back of her sweatpants has pink, and the one over here has juicy. <laughs> They're making grapefruit? I don't know what. Oh. I'm not from here, I'm, I'm from Illinois. I was born and raised on a farm in the great state of Illinois, and I brought some of my farm with me. I brought as much of my farm as I could fit in here. No, oh, come here. I know, he's adorable. This is my friend, his name is Paco. He's a pig, he's very smart. Hola, hola. Say hello to everyone. Hola, hola, can you say hello? Si, sí. good. You say hello, hola. <laughs> Do you know how to say the word hello? Si. Sí. Will you say the word hello? Si. Sí. Say hello, hola. No. Say he, he, lo, lo, you got it. He, he, lo, lo, perfect. Now say hello, hola. Come on. <laughs> My pig is very smart. He speaks Spanish. ¿Cómo está? Don't do this. ¿Qué tal, señor? I do not speak Spanish. You don't? No. But I do? Yes. <laughs> you don't think that's weird? I don't think it's weird at all. Okay? Now say hello. No. All right. We'll use the word in a sentence. Okay, señor. Um, my name is Taylor. Hello. Your turn. I love to eat hello. You can't eat hello. I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. When was the last time you ate hello? Breakfast. Breakfast. You ate breakfast. Hello. See. Si. What flavor? Lemon. Lemon. Lemon hello. Si. I'm talking about the word hello. H-E-L-L-O. No, no, no. J-E-L-L-O. Oh, get out. Oh, get out. Don't applaud for that. Come on. So it, what's your favorite rock and roll band? Pearl Ham. No, Pearl Jam. Sorry. All right. At Christmas, how do you spell ho, ho, ho? J-O-J-O-J-O. -O -O. Get out of here. Let's just do the jokes. They're called a hoax. Come on, man. Come on. People are watching the Dove Channel from all over the world. Really? Yes, there are people from South America. Hola. People from uh, Europe. Hola. Canada. Oh, Canada. <laughs> the United States. Oh, no. What's wrong with the United States of America? Barbecue. All right, all right, all right, all right. Why are they laughing? Never mind. They look, are they hungry? No, they're not hungry. They've already eaten. Are they Christian? Some of them are. They're hungry. Okay, all right, whatever, whatever. <laughs> don't get the wrong idea. Don't freak out and don't become a mob. Come on out here. No. Come here. I didn't bring just pigs with me, but my family has a pig farm. This is Ramon. Where are we? We're doing a wonderful program on the Dove Channel. Who are these guys? This is the audience. They're hungry? No, they're not. There are audience people waving back at my puppet. Thank you. That's... How are you? I'm good. I didn't see you in the car. I wasn't in the car. Well, Ramon, how did you get here? On my bike. On your bike. Mm-hmm. You have a Schwinn? A Harley. A Harley. You've got a Harley Davidson motorcycle? It's a hog. Oh, get out of here. Get out. Do you have a job? I do. And what do you do? I'm the bank. You're a bank? Mm-hmm, I'm the last bank left in the United States. Hey, hey, hey. There are a lot of banks in the United States. Not with money. Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh, stop it. Am I naked? Yep. 
Oh, stop it, stop it. It's all right, you're a pig. I'm the naked thinker, thinker. Whatever, whatever, whatever. We're going to work together. I was talking about service. What are we going to do? We're going to sing a song. Who is you, me, and Paco? Hey, Paco. Oh, come on, Ramon. What? He cannot talk. What? He can't talk. How come? He's a puppet. What? He's a puppet. Are you serious? Yes. And I need your help. What do I do? Jump up on top of him and pull him on my hand. What? Jump up on top of him and pull him on my hand. Are you serious? Yes. It's weird. No, it's not. Get up there. Grab pigskin. Pull him on my hand. Pull him all the way on. This is so awkward. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Hola, Ramon. Hello, Taco. We're going to sing a song. Who is the three of us? Who? You, me, and Paco. Hola, senor. Hola, Paco. What are we doing? We're singing a song. Who is you, me, and Paco? When? Right now. Who starts? I start. What are we doing? We're singing a song. <laughs> Who is you, me, and Ramon? When? Right now. Who starts? I start. You? Yep. Not me. Not you. Not him. Not him. Who? Me. When? Right now. What are we doing? I just said. <laughs> We're singing a song. Who starts? I do. When do I go? Your second. Dos? Second. Dos? Your dose. Second? Yes. When am I? Oh, for goodness sake! I'm first, he's second, when are you? 29th? No! <laughs> what kind of banker are you? He's a loan officer. Get out of here. Get out. No. <laughs> Let's do our thing. You start, I start, then me, then you, then me, then you, and third. Yep, here we go. <clears throat> do that for me. <clears throat> do that for me. <clears throat> They didn't get that joke. That's all right. We're going to die. No, we're not. <laughs> you need deodorant. Get out of here. Get out. A wada and chew. A wada and chew. What do I do? Same thing. A wada and chew. A wada and chew. A bodo skiddy dot. A wada and chew. Here we go. A bodo skiddy dot. A wada and chew. Well, it and dip and little kit and note and boat and little dot and ask. Let it go. Let it go. No, we're not singing that. My dad gave me $50 not to sing. Let it go. Who did him? Let it go. Stop it. Let it go, senor. All right. A boat house, get it out. A water out and chew a lit and dip and little kit and open boat and little boat and a lawyer. You're an attorney? See, si. But you're a pig. So? Pigs say sue we. I say sue you. Get out. Is that what they can taste like? Oh. Oh, that's disgusting. You guys are going to sit back here. What do we do? Just sit here. Oh, sorry. Don't even move. I brought as much stuff as I could fit in here. I build these. I've been making them for a long time. Are you ready? No. Come here. No. This is my friend Zero. I know he's adorable. He's a penguin. He's very nice. I don't know if you're familiar with penguins, but they are kind of a living joke. Thank you. Yep. Are those pigs? Yep, those are pigs. Uh Uh-oh. You got a problem with pigs? I'm an angry bird. Oh, stop it. Stop it. (laughs) Okay, you're going to freak out the little people. Penguins, as a rule, have all these issues. They have wings that don't work. Thank you. And his feet, but he can only waddle. Yep. But tonight, on this stage, we can... I need your help, young lady. Yes, up here. Come on up here. Give me a... Give her a big round. I need your help. Give me a hand. You're so nice. How are you? I'm so glad you came. I need you to stand right here next to me, right next to this microphone. Stand right there. What is your name? Lauren. Hi, Lauren. I'm Taylor. Hi. How old is she? How old are you? I'm 22. 22. I love you. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> this is my friend Zero. He's got all kinds of issues. I sure do. He can't use his arms or his feet, but you're going to help him, Lauren. Put your hand right under there. This hand, stick it all the way through under his wing. Whoa, okay. Your other hand goes right under there. Whoa. You now have hands. Whoa, okay. You are going to be his hands, all right? Where are you from? Where do you live? Uh, Columbus, Indiana, but I go to school here. You go to school here, but you're from Columbus, Indiana. Woohoo! Okay, ready? Yep. You've got hands. I love it. Wave to everybody. Hello. Hey, there you go. They work. They sure do. What's the first thing you'd do if you had your own hands? I'd wash them. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Pretend we're at the sink. Turn on the hot and cold water. Turning on the water. There we go. Okay. Wash your hands. I'm washing my hands. Good. I don't use salt because that's the way we do it in Columbus, Indiana. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. 
There's a bar of soap right there. Grab the soap with your hand. Got it. Good. Scrub your hands. Scrub my hands. Good. Get all the dirt off doing it. Good job. Put the soap down. Or it'll just throw it on the floor. Okay. <laughs> just the way we do it at home. Okay. <laughs> I love you. Okay. Rinse all the soap off. Doing it. Rinse all the soap off. Doing it. Turn off the hot and cold water. Done. Now what? Your hands are all wet, so you got to dry your hands with what? Find something, dry your hands. What do I do? That's good. You dry your hands on your own body? That's the way we do it in Columbus, Indiana. All right, all right, all right, all right. You're awesome. You're doing a great job. What do you study in school? Uh, music business. The music business. Perfect. Awesome. That'll fit in with what you want to do. Really? Tell everybody what you want to do. Sing and dance. You want to sing and dance right here tonight? Yes. What are you going to sing and dance? The hokey pokey. The hokey pokey. Not talking to you, sir. All right. All right. <laughs> He's just helping out. Do you know how to do the hokey pokey, Lauren? Do you? you do. Perfect. I put my right foot in. <laughs> yes, you're also on my feet. Okay. <laughs> it's Okay. We did it on Thurthus. All right, all right. I put my right foot out. I put my right foot back in. Okay. I put my left foot out, and then I shake it all without untwerking. No, you are not. <laughs> not for this. This is my friend, Lauren. She's from Columbia, Indiana. That was awesome. Nice job. Did you like that? I love her. Here. Oh, sorry. I, I was a music student myself at one time. And a few years ago, I wrote an album of lullabies. 242 lullabies on a one CD set. <laughs> Nobody's ever heard anything past the second song. Which is unfortunate because the third track is the heavy metal lullaby. Little one, day is done. We had fun. Oh, my little one day is done. Shh. Time to go to sleep now. Mommy and Daddy are sick of this. <laughs> yeah! There's a monster under the bed. He knows your name and he's hungry. Sleep. <laughs> Little one. <laughs> oh, I've got skills. I've got all these skills with no application to real life. Well, I've only got about an hour to go here. Um, Let's see. You're such a nice audience. I really appreciate you coming out to the program here tonight. Let's see. Who can I use here? Uh, oh, let's see. General right back here with the flesh-colored hair. Yes, you. <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. Come on up here, my friend. This is going to be so much fun. I do a lot of work for um, a company, not Dove, called Disney. The reason I work for Disney is because I'm a comedian who doesn't curse, and I have puppets, so there's only one company that hires that. And... Uh, <laughs> I work for them. Come on up here, my friend. You look great. Stand right here next to me. What is your name? Larry. Hey, Larry. I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you. This is the audience. Audience, this is Larry. We treat each other with respect. You're going to have a lot of fun, all right? We live to serve. Where are you from, Larry? Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. The whole town is here. All right. Welcome. Great. <laughs> and what do you do for a living in Richmond? Uh, no, I live here now. Oh, okay. okay fair enough. Uh, what do you do here? A uh, telehealth specialist. A telehealth specialist. So people who are watching TV who have issues, you help them out. Awesome. A telehealth. This is going to work out perfectly. Awesome. That is so good. You're good? Oh, yeah, I'm great. All right. Awesome. And you're a telehealth specialist? I sure am. Okay. A telehealth specialist. So people who watch TV... They need drugs. Oh, really? 
Like what? Shit contracts. Oh, all right. <laughs> Very good. So that's a skill. Oh, I got mad skills. You do? You've got mad skills? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Karate. Karate? I'll bet this audience at home would love to see some karate right now. Would you guys like to see some karate? Oh, yeah! Oh, my gosh! Where do you use that at work? Oh, my gosh! That's incredible. I had no idea. Well, I got skills. What else do you do? I sing and dance. <laughs> You're a singing, dancing, telehealth. <laughs> a lot of mothers right now are covering their children's eyes. I want you to give him a big round of applause. That was awesome. Well, you folks have been great. I've got. I've got to get going. I had a philosophy professor in college for a final exam in philosophy. He brought in a stool like this, and he says, based upon what you've learned in philosophy, prove the stool does not exist. I wrote, what stool? <laughs> I got an A. Hey, thank you very much for letting me be a part, be a part everybody. Have you had a great time tonight? I have loved it. you've enjoyed it at home stay tuned and watch us again on Shonda Pierce's stand up for families good night